Good morning. Good morning. It's pretty early. But it's going to be an awesome day, babe. We've got mm-hmm. a big adventure. We're going out to the reef. Yeah, we're going to go to the reef. Toby found a nice reef. I hope it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Let's check the weather. Looks pretty awesome to me. Actually got a surprise for you. I'll show you this now. I'll run out. Check this out. Yes, we got a new addition to the boat. A world leader in uh, electric propulsion, e-propulsion, has kindly sent us a new outboard motor for the dinghy. So we're taking that at the reef today. We're going to be testing that out and um, telling you guys how it goes. Anyway, let's get to it. We'll get a coffee, get some food and get sailing. See you guys soon. See you out there. Have fun. Beautiful. Get our coffee in the morning. I love living on a boat, having a coffee with this view every morning. Beautiful. Alright, we're going to get going shortly. It's going to be a good day. nearly up to the reef well this is actually the reef you can see the bottom right here it's 15 meters deep we're still sailing watching out for bombies we've uh, flown out here it's only uh, three hours ago we left and it's 27 miles so we came out here real quick and yeah it's still some waves in that and there's still about 12 knots of wind but as we get in behind the reef it should calm down and then the weather is supposed to drop off the next two days so this hopefully is ideal. We can sail out here and then um, it all will calm off. All right, guys, we've anchored up here at this beautiful reef. I think it's called Walker K or Walker Reef. Conditions aren't perfect, but we used the wind to sail out here and the wind is gonna drop off. Um, tomorrow it should be really calm. It is pretty calm now, but it's still a bit rocky but that's actually a good test to show you what we're going to do with this motor as we're on a small boat 37 foot we don't have davits so the dinghy has to get loaded on the front when we're sailing and the engine gets put here on the back and this is a compromise like many things on a small boat and my previous petrol powered engine was a 10 horsepower and weighs about 20 kilos and so when the boat's moving around like this you can imagine getting it from here and putting it on the dinghy it's quite the struggle, you know, and I'm relatively big and strong and healthy and it's okay, but I can imagine in a few years time, it'll be, oh, that, that won't really be possible. Good thing with this thing is, you can break it down to three pieces. And so that's a massive, massive game changer for this 
this situation on this boat. We're going to show you now how we mount this e-propulsion electric engine on our, on our dinghy. Okay, so three pieces. I'll take them apart now so that Marie can hand them to me when I'm in the dinghy. This is the, obviously the battery. It's just one power cable, a clip on top, and off it comes. Apparently it floats. It's waterproof. Give it a try. <laughs> I don't know. I'll put that there. And then we've got the tiller. This just comes apart here. And one cable underneath. And that's that piece. And then you're just left with the, the motor, basically. And that's very light. Okay, that's easy. The magnetic fob go straight on there. Hold this down for a couple of seconds. We've got 82% battery. Okay, that's it. It's all together. All ready to go now. We're going to go and adventure this beautiful place. So, first impressions. Well, it just goes. That's the simple way of saying it. With the petrol outboard, you've got to worry about fuel. You've got to prime the fuel. You've got to put the choke on. You've got to put the throttle in the right position. Then you've got to hope it goes when you pull it. You might be pulling it a few times. This e-propulsion unit, hold the button down for a couple of seconds, twist the throttle and off you go. The other thing we noticed straight away, it's just really quiet. We could have a normal conversation on our way to go somewhere. So that was also something we noticed right away. Mary's going to do a depth test. Woo! Okay, I'm walking on land, kind of. We're literally out in the middle of the ocean, 60 kilometers from land, and we're standing on this little sand cay that doesn't quite get dry. How amazing is this place? Look at the colors. Incredible. Such a luxury. Yeah, we're going for a snorkel. There's plenty of options around here. The water is crystal clear. Beautiful colors everywhere. We've got, a, got our eye on a bommie over this way, so I'll cruise over there now. We'll jump in the water and we'll show you what it's like, but I think it's going to be pretty epic. You ready? Yeah. This bommie here. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to throw an anchor down here probably, and we'll go and snorkel it up. What do you reckon? You guys are going to see before me. I'll put you under now.
we've had three days out at the reef now and we're leaving first thing in the morning six o'clock bright and early so i'm going to load the dinghy tonight while it's still light and uh, we'll show you how we do that and it's definitely made a lot easier by having a, a light little uh, engine like this one from e propulsion so i've got this little bridle set up where i can just easy haul the dinghy out of the water The build quality of the unit seems very, very good. It's very simple. Each component, you can basically do everything one-handed. The clips are big, you can get your fingers in there. The terminals for all the plugs are very good, just a simple half turn to screw them on. The pivot mount is very good. There's a couple of things I would advise, or a couple of things I would change if I could, but I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. We're going to do a pros and cons sort of into the video, a roundup as you would. from the reef now and I'm um, happy we are in Magnetic Island uh, we are in Picnic Bay if I remember well the name and we're gonna go exploring this beach Right guys, we've been using this little motor from e-propulsion now for a couple of weeks. So we thought it'd give you a bit of a roundup of, yeah, the pros and the cons, the good and the bad. You know, we, we're going to bring you an honest account of this little motor. So maybe you can start by the points you think could be improved? Okay, so there are a couple of things. For example, the fob, it's magnetic and I think it's like a key. You take that off, no one's really going to steal the motor. Well, they can't use it. but the battery, which costs about a thousand, or a little over a thousand Australian dollars, that just clicks on, which is great, but there's no way to lock it on. So if you leave it on the beach, would you leave a thousand dollars just sitting in your dinghy? I wouldn't. I would like to have at least a little hole through you can put a padlock through or something. So it'd be so easy just to take that thousand two hundred dollar battery and walk off with it. That's one thing that I think should be addressed. Another thing would be there's a fast charger so when you're charging these batteries it's three hours and that's great but on the battery itself there's no battery meter so you never know how far along the charging is so it's not till you put the, the motor back together and you've got your little display that it tells you what state the battery's at so okay. it would be good if there was little three bars like ding 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 all right now you're at 25 50 75 100 percent so when you're charging it's like all right 75 percent that's enough i can go so that's one thing they could easily put on. One more thing that I miss from my old engine. This one has just got the locked down position and the fully up propeller out of the water position. My old engine had a middle position, so coming into a beach or going over the reef where it's very shallow, you could have the propeller locked up that it was just under the water, but you could basically get the same height as the bottom of your dinghy, so you could skim on really shallow things. This one's just right down and then yeah, there's nothing else. So an uh, in-between position would be nice. All right, see, that wasn't many uh, bad points, was it? We'll get on to the positive points for this one. Obviously, the big one for me is the quietness. There is, it really is no noise. It's a tiny little whine, but you don't really even hear that. It's just the gurgling of the dinghy going through the water. and That's about all you hear. Um, that's magical. We drove around the marina in Townsville, and you don't feel bad. You know, I feel bad with a petrol engine buzzing around. Someone might be sleeping or talking on the phone. And this, you just buzz around. And, well, you have to be careful you don't sneak up on people, like, sunbathing naked or whatever. But you really can just sort of stealthily cruise around. 
and yeah, you, you can do it in the middle of the night and no one's, you're not putting anyone out. So that's pretty amazing. Big point, I guess, is you don't have to carry any fuel. So people cruising boats have always got canisters on the deck full of petrol, fumes coming out, all that sort of stuff. As well, you know, you've got to go and buy the fuel and lug it around in your dinghy. So that's a big, big point. Obviously, we've just upgraded to lithium. So for, for us, charging this battery, it's not a problem. Like, we have enough power now. So it's basically free to do what we want to do with this engine. It's three hours to charge it up, and we can do that every day on a battery. So, yeah, awesome not having to carry fuel around. Another one is there's no maintenance. As with all things electric, cars and everything these days, there's no filters, there's no gearbox oil, there's no water in the carburetor, there's no, you don't have to, have to do anything. You just, you can just run it forever, basically, and there's, hard, there's only one moving part. So that's awesome, like really, really good. This model, this particular model has regen, which is really cool. I guess it's made for little trailer sailors and things like that. But in an upcoming video, I've got a project, I'm gonna hook it on the back of Shehelion, be able to regen power while we're sailing. And so then won't even have to charge it off the lithium batteries. But that'll be in another video. But that's a, a, a good thing. And it does come with a slightly higher cost for this particular engine because of the regen cap capability. It's just real robust, it's very simple, there's not much to it as you've seen, but it's very robust, it's very well made. Um, I'm not worried about chucking it around, I'm not worried about it breaking, I don't have to baby it. Okay, I guess in summary, the differences, like day to day for me, not having owned an electric outboard before, is that my previous outboard was a much bigger engine and much faster. So I could cruise around at 20 knots and go longer distance. So that is something you have to get used to. It just means going slower now with this engine. That's okay, you just adjust. Like if I was in a motorboat, I would be going much faster than if I was in a sailboat. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. But it is one thing that we have to adjust to. We do go slower, but then We've sort of found that's cool because we notice more stuff around and we can have a chat along the way and we actually enjoy the trip instead of just going full speed and, and getting to the destination. So it's just an adjustment. Um, I would prefer to be able to go slightly faster. For example, and maybe this is also a con, when there's a bit of a chop and you can get on the plane on your boat, then you don't really get wet in your dinghy because you're on top of the waves. If you're like putting through them and it's choppy, you tend to get a bit splashed. I guess another Another part is, you can't really deny it, the cost of this motor is quite high. It is an investment. Um, it's definitely more than a three horsepower petrol engine would be. But there's no maintenance, there's no fuel. So the initial cost is the whole outlay for a good 10 years, I would say. So yeah, the initial cost is quite high, but then, you know, then you've got it and you're not paying anything more out. You're not paying Literally at the moment it's $50 for a canister of petrol and I was going through one of them a week so it'll take a while to pay back that initial cost but you will get there. I don't know so much about in Australia but I do know in many places in Europe, in lakes and rivers and places where the cities, petrol engines are just not allowed anymore because of noise and fumes and all that sort of thing. So electric engines, that's all you're allowed. So there is no getting away from the fact you're going to have to make that investment. So. Obviously in other countries that's going to come into play as well, maybe not in the ocean so much, but um, in, in highly um, populated areas that's just going to be the way it is, so that's pretty obvious. I just learned the word idiot proof by Vernon and so yeah, this engine is idiot proof but I would say it's more nice to say I have peace of mind. Uh, when I'm taking this engine I don't have to think that something gonna break and I have to fix it or having any trouble and it's really easy to manipulate like I can be more independent with this one because the other was quite heavy for me. Even for starting the engine the other engine was quite complicated for me I was not having the sequence right all the time and this one I just have to put the magnet in and I can go. And one other point is definitely the quietness. We already talked about it, but I really love to be in natural environment without any human trace around. And for me, it's fitting better to have a quiet engine when you're exploring a really natural places. 
And even to observe animals, I like to go close to birds or to fish or even some mantas. And with this engine, we, have the, we had the experience that it was possible to get in closer without scaring them. So for me, it's really an amazing point when you want just to watch the amazing nature around you. All right, well, I guess in conclusion, we've had a great time with this and I'd like to thank E-Propulsion for uh, yeah, trusting us and enough and to give us this engine. We're going to definitely use it a lot and um, enjoy using it a lot. You know, that's the whole point of it and, and that's, that's what we'll do. Thanks all of you for watching and a special thanks for all the Patreons. Like we really love to have you behind and supporting us. Yeah, that's super important. Um, we really don't take that for granted, you guys. It's um, really, really cool of you. And it's, yeah, good to know that, that, you know, you find what we're creating and what we're doing every week worthy of, of shelling out some, some of your hard-earned money for. We really, we really, really appreciate that, always. And PayPal guys as well, really, really cool. Um, we are hoping that you appreciate uh, this episode and you found this review of this new technology interesting. We will be doing a bit of a follow-up video in probably three, four months time with this, you know, that we've, we've had it for a longer time. And as I said, I'm going to like rig, the, rig this engine up to be on the back of Shehalion so we can test out the regen capabilities. Anyway, see you all next week. Bye bye.